what do you think when I say natural numbers? Is this something that includes zero or it just starts at one? And how would you go about proving that two doesn't equal one? We'll start by talking about an Italian mathematician called Giuseppe Piano, who provided a basis to what natural numbers really are. He produced a list of five axioms that define what natural numbers are, something that has been unchanged since the 19th century. Before we define these axioms, we need to establish a key piece of notation. This is something called the successor function. This just takes an input x and outputs the value after it. For example, one is, one is the successor of zero. Right, so let's talk about these axioms. We've already said that there are five of them. The first being that zero is a natural number. You might think this is quite trivial, but we need to define this. The second one saying that for every natural number x, the successor of x is also a natural number. This allows for any sort of basic counting to be established, as we can start counting from zero all the way up to infinity. The third axiom is to do with equality. This just states for all numbers x and y, x equals y, if and only if the successor of x equals the successor of y. Then the fourth axiom, again, is quite trivial. It just states that there does not exist a natural number x such that the successor of x equals zero. You might think this is quite inevitable, as obviously zero being the first number, it can't succeed anything. The, first, the fifth axiom is known as induction, and we'll define it later in this video. So I'm just going to pop them up to the top right there so we can keep track of them. Right, let's go back to that question from the beginning. How do we actually prove that 2 doesn't equal 1? You might think this is quite trivial and just it's just true, but we need to show this using these axioms. To do this, we're going to need a proof method called contradiction. This isn't too complicated. It involves assuming the statement is true and then actually showing that it's false. So for this question, we need to firstly rewrite it into something that we recognise for these axioms. So we're going to rewrite it into this expression, which just reads, it is not the case that the successor of the successor of zero equals the successor of zero. That's just a fancy way to say that it's not the case that two equals one. So using this contradiction method, we need to assume that two equals one and then actually show this is false. So we're going to create this H1 hypothesis here, and then we need to show that this is false. So this is H1 which means the successor of the successor of zero equals the successor of zero. Now, this is where we use those axioms. So we're going to rewrite this using the third axiom, where we take x to equal the successor of zero and y just to equal zero. Therefore, we can rewrite this h1 into h2, which is just the successor of zero equals zero. Now, I want you to look at this quickly and see if you can recognize something. Yep, if you noticed it, it is simply just application of a4 which is the fourth axiom hence we have derived a contradiction and together we have just shown from the piano axioms that two doesn't equal one so it's not too complicated it just involves applying these axioms so how would you prove that three doesn't equal two again it's very similar it's just the same sort of method just with an extra step of applying the third axiom now, what about that fifth axiom I introduced earlier? I called it induction. See, this is a way of proving something, but this time it uses two steps. So firstly, we've got to prove something for the base case. This is where we prove a statement is true for the starting value. For example, in the natural numbers, we to prove something for zero. Then we prove the inductive step. This is where we assume that a statement is true for some natural number x, which is known as the inductive hypothesis. And then using this hypothesis, we show that the statement actually holds for the number following x. Recall, this is, this is just the successor of x. So this is called the inductive step. The idea of induction is actually better visualized. So let's, let's think of it as dominoes. If we call this first domino the base case, and all the ones following this, just the inductive step. So if we think about it as proving that first case and toppling that first domino over, you see that this topples the rest of them just because we proved it happens for the successive value. Looking at these axioms, you might be wondering how would someone do addition and multiplication? That's something we actually can't do yet using the axioms we just defined. So why don't we start with the more basic of the two? We'll start with addition, say. This itself actually takes two more definitions. 
So these two definitions within Peano arithmetic aren't actually too complicated. The first is just an identity definition. It says for all natural numbers x, x plus 0 is just x. And the second states that for all x, y, natural, x plus the successor of y is just the successor of the sum of the two. So this one allows any sort of addition. And let's add those to the y definitions on the right. So let's actually prove something with these new definitions. How about this statement? This, this question here is asking us to prove that for all a and b natural, that the successor of a plus b is just the successor of a plus b. You might think that this is literally the same as the second definition of addition, but we actually don't know that addition is commutative yet. This basically means that we don't know that x plus y is the same as y plus x. For this proof, we'll need to use induction. This is just that fifth action we introduced. In induction actually has to be focused around a variable. So for example, in this question, we're just going to focus on the variable b. Therefore, we need to think about what the first case of this variable is. So we're proving this for natural numbers, which just means that the first value is 0, as the natural numbers start at 0 and go off to infinity. So let's do that. We'll think about the base case. So let's rewrite our statement, but replace all of the b's with the number 0. So looking at this, what are we thinking? Well, let's look at the left hand side to start with. We can see that this is just a simple application of the plus one definition, where we'll just use x equals the successor of a. And now again, let's look at the right hand side. We notice again, this is just another application of that plus one definition, but this time we'll use x equals a. This gives us this equality that says that the successor of a is equal to the successor of a. But you might think we're finished now, but no. We actually need to use that third axiom and reduce it down to the simple equality stating that a equals a. So let's do that. Now, this actually holds by the reflexivity of the equal sign, something that you'll learn more about if you do any more analysis. So that's the base case concluded. So let's put it over there and let's move on to the inductive step. For this inductive step, what's the first thing we need to do? We need to define our inductive hypothesis. This is simply just you saying that the statement we're trying to prove is true. So in this example, we'll call it H0, which is just that the successor of A plus B is the successor of the sum of the two. So now what do we actually need to prove? So as we did before, where we replace all the Bs with zero, for the inductive step, we replace all of our Bs with the successor of B. Looking at this, what might you want to do now? Well, I don't know if you spotted it, but on that left hand side, we can just rewrite this using our plus two definition. So now we've got this expression and we look at this again and we wonder what can we do now? Again, we can we can see that on the right hand side, we can use this plus two definition and we'll rewrite that to this statement. Now, looking at this, that left hand side uses our inductive hypothesis. We can see that we can rewrite that again to this equality here. And now, just as we did before, we'll reduce this down twice just to the simple equality that a plus b equals a plus b. So we're done. We've shown that the base case holds for this statement and the inductive step holds for this statement. So what do we do now? Well, we're done, so we don't need to do anything more. This result we've just shown here is actually really useful in analysis because now we've got the plus two definition where we can add the successor on the right hand side. And we've also got this theorem where we can add the successor on the left hand side. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and I hope you join me for the next video.